Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. So good afternoon now, now many of you are requesting me the second part of this video that is quantum chemistry crash course. So I thought of uh, taking Huckel molecular orbitals uh, because that is a more important video. Uh, one is hydrogen atom wave function for which I'll attach the link over here. You can go ahead and watch that video because that is quite lengthy right. So HMO I thought is more important because it has not been asked for a lot uh, for a time now and I feel that this might be asked Huckel molecular orbital theory. Uh, so there's this particular question for which I have a trick that roots of secular equation for linear and cyclic polyene so this question has been asked numerous amount of times in both your net and gate exam that you have to find the secular the roots of the secular equation of a particular uh, either a linear polyene or a cyclic polyene so i'll tell you how to solve so for linear polyenes uh, how do you solve let's say energy we need to find out so energy is equal to alpha plus 2 beta cos j pi upon n plus 1 okay so this is the formula for linear polyenes where your uh, j is nothing but uh, values of uh, their whole numbers from like starting from 1 2 3 4 5 6 so on and so forth and your n is the number of carbon atoms in that particular cyclic polyene so uh, linear polyene so for example if i am talking about let's say ethene right two two carbon atoms so the form, n will be equal to 2 so i'll take the example of this allylic radical and in this allylic radical there are three carbon atoms so n will be equal to 3 so uh, and for the cyclic polyenes the formula is ej equal to alpha plus 2 beta cos 2j upon 2j pi upon n okay so the only difference over here is here we only have j over there we'll have 2j and here we have n plus 1 for linear polyenes and for cyclic polyenes the formula will be simply n okay now let's say we need to find out the secular roots of the equation for this for this carbon uh, for this allylic radical so if there are three carbon atoms there will be three uh, energy levels there will be three energy levels okay so if there are three carbon atoms there will be three energy levels if there are four there will be four energy levels uh, and if, for example in cyclic polyenes if there are four um, like i'm taking example of cyclobutadiene so there are four carbon atoms so n equal to four if i'm talking about benzene then n will be equal to six so that's how you need to calculate all right now let's use this formula to find out the answer so uh, first of all we'll take e1 because j we can take value equal to one so e1 equal to alpha plus two beta now i'll put j equal to one in this formula so j is one and n will always be four because n is three in this case because there are three carbon atoms so n plus one will always be four so just remember in the denominator will always have four so uh, this will become cos pi by four now cos pi by four is 44 cos 45 cos 45 is one by root two so the formula becomes alpha plus two beta cos uh, pi by 4 which is 1 by root 1 by root 2 so 2 into 1 by root 2 will become root 2 so alpha plus root 2 beta that is one of the roots then let's come on to energy e2 e2 is equal to alpha plus 2 beta cos now we are taking e2 so j will be equal to 2 now so if i take j equal to 2 so this will become 2 pi by 4 alpha plus 2 beta cos 2 pi by 4 that is uh, 2 pi by 4 is nothing but pi by 2 right and pi by 2 is cos 90 is 0 so cos 90 0 means this whole term becomes 0 so we get answer equal to alpha okay because this whole term becomes equal to 0 then we take e3 e3 means j equal to 3 if i put j equal to 3 we get 3 pi by 4 so alpha plus 2 beta cos 3 pi by 4 okay alpha plus 2 beta cos 3 pi by 4 and 3 pi by 4 is nothing but cos 135 cos 135 means cos is going in the second quadrant so cos in the second quadrant is negative uh, so that means cos minus of 45 cos minus of 45 i'm not going to tell you trigonometry you can do that on uh, by yourself we'll get cos 135 cos 135 is 1 by root minus 1 by root 2 so 2 into minus of 1 by root 2 will become minus root 2 so alpha minus root 2 beta so these are the three roots and this is how you solve a four marker this was for four marks i think in december 2012 this was asked and uh, if you want to arrange them according to the energy then what you need to do is uh, see e3 this alpha value is negative and beta value is also negative both these values are negative so minus of minus this will become plus so this will become alpha plus root 2 beta right this is only alpha so this will be only minus and here both the terms are minus this is also minus and this is also minus so this one will be of the lowest energy so if you have to arrange them in the order of energies uh, just a second then e3 will be of the highest energy 
followed by e2 then e1 i hope you got the concept if both are negative so this this will become this will be minus this will also be minus uh, this will only be one minus and this will be minus minus of minus so this will become plus so this will become alpha plus root 2 beta if beta is negative and hence its energy will be even higher right now let's take an example of cyclic polyene so in cyclic polyenes there's one more difference first of all there we had n plus one here we'll only have n uh, then uh, one more thing that is also there is that uh, that j over here the formula becomes 2j pi and the j value also is over there we had 1 2 3 4 over here we have 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 like that so n value is equal to 4 and uh, so let's do that so e0 first i take j equal to 0 so this becomes alpha plus 2 beta and if i take j equal to 0 this whole term becomes 0 so it becomes cos 0 cos 0 is 1 so the formula becomes alpha plus 2 beta so one of the roots is alpha plus 2 beta e0 if i take e1 e1 means i am taking j equal to plus 1 first i'll take plus one then i'll take minus one so if i take e1 equal to alpha plus 2 beta i put j equal to one so this becomes 2 pi by 4 right if i take j equal to one this becomes 2 pi by 4 2 pi by 4 again pi by 2 cos 9 cos pi by 2 90 cos 90 is 0 so this whole term will become 0 so the e1 becomes equal to alpha right then what about e2 uh, or e minus 1 i'm taking j equal to minus 1 so i'm writing e minus 1 so e minus 1 is equal to alpha plus 2 beta cos now I am taking j equal to minus 1. So this becomes cos minus 2 pi by 4. Minus 2 pi by 4. So this becomes minus pi by 2. So it becomes minus this minus 2 pi by 4. This becomes minus pi by 2. And cos in the fourth quadrant is positive. So even if we get minus the value will be in plus only. So this becomes cos minus of 90. And cos minus 90 is also equal to 0. Okay. So this whole term again becomes 0. So we get alpha. Now what about if we take j equal to plus 2. So since there are 4 carbon atoms, so there will be 4 different energy levels, right? So now I will take E equal to plus 4. So if I take E, sorry, plus 2. So E equal to plus 2. Um, so alpha plus 2 beta. Now j is equal to 2. So this becomes 4 pi by 4. So this becomes 4 pi by 4. So 2 beta cos 4 pi by 4. So this becomes cos pi. And cos pi value is minus 1. Cos 180 value is minus 1. So this becomes alpha minus 2 beta. So these are the four uh, roots of the secular equation for cyclobutadiene. Similarly, you can practice ethene. You can pra practice 1,3-butadiene. And you can practice benzene for polyenes. And you can try and find out the secular equations. If you have the time, you can just go ahead and practice. Okay, so this is a very easy thing. And again, if you want to arrange them in the order of energy. So I told you beta is negative, alpha is negative. So this E plus 2 will have the highest energy. E plus 2 will have the highest energy. Followed by E minus 1. But both are alpha. So E minus 1 will be equal to E1. So these two energy levels will be equal. That is they will be degenerate. And then we'll have E0. So E0 will be of the least energy because alpha is also negative, beta is also negative. So both the values will become negative. Okay. Uh, so there are some other formulas that I needed to discuss. One is the overlap integral, which is very, very common. It was asked in your gate 2017 exam or 18 exam. Yeah, gate 2018 exam as well. Uh, so this is C1 square plus C2 square plus 2 C1 C2 s equal to 1 so if you have been given a wave function in the form of a uh, in the form of linear combination of two different wave, wave functions let's say c1 psi1 plus c2 psi2 where your psi1 and psi2 are the wave functions and c1 and c2 are some constants that are accompanying the wave function so if the wave function is normalized then we can equate we can use this formula c1 square plus c2 square plus 2 c1 c2 s equal to 1 and from here whatever the value of s we get since c1 c2 will be known to us we will find out the value of s and that will be our overlap integral right then there is a question on uh, what is the degeneracy of orbital uh, for which some energy is given and some z value is also given okay what will be the degeneracy of the orbital for which some z value is given and some uh, energy value is also given so the formula is e equal to minus 13.6 z square by n square where the value of n square is nothing but the orbital degeneracy so whatever the value of n square you get that is the orbital degeneracy and uh, the value of uh, e will be given to you and the value of z will be given to you or it might be given which atom it is so according to the atom you can find out the value of z and you can find out the value of n square so n square will give you the orbital degeneracy this was asked for two marks i think last second uh, uh, i think two years back okay then uh, there is a question then there is an example that i have done for variation theorem for which uh, i will give you the link in the description box below just click on the link there is a particular question that was asked last year in your csi net december 2017 exam and just solve that particular question okay just do it once 
that is the only thing you can do from variation theorem in th in these last two days okay so just practice that once and that will be good enough all right so just practice this uh, um, question on variation theorem and also i've done a question on overlap integral so just in case you did not understand the overlap integral uh, you can go ahead and uh, click on the lesson below i've given the link below and there's a whole quantum chemistry lesson that i've done on on academy related to the questions so you can just go ahead and do that right so i hope you found this video helpful so please like this video uh, share this video and subscribe to my channel right thank you so much for watching and all the very best for the upcoming exam target grf not ls all right and definitely you'll make it thank you